afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Going Uptown. And this is your host, Uptown Brown. And even though it's rainy and gloomy outside, I am real excited about today's show because I have with me contestants and judges from The Voice in Boston. And they are doing positive things in our community for the musicians in our community. Um, hey, with me today are the judges. And then f we're going to have a conversation with them. And after that, we're going to hear the contestants sing. So joining me this afternoon are the judges. First to my right uh, is Mr. Preem Richardson. He is a man that does a lot in this community. He, have, he wears a lot of hats, especially with the Boston media industry, as he is the Supreme Entertainment Manager from BMG Records and Legacy Recording Studio. He is executive producer for Barber Time Media Network and What's Up Boston Radio and TV. And amongst other things, he is Boston's very own independent managing A&R person. And I must also mention that he won Producer of the Year three times for the Urban Music Award. My second guest is very near and dear to me, Mrs but I usually embrace her as Sister Monica Anderson Spencer, who is a soprano who has performed all over the nation with diverse organizations as the Alan Ailey American Dance Theater, the Joffrey Ballet, the Opera Southwest, the Goldvosky Opera Institute Summer Workshop, the Wolf Trap Opera Training Program, the Nivella Atelli Singers, and performed with great jazz legends, Donald Byrd, Max Roach, and Oscar Brown Jr. Locally, she has performed with the Speak Easy Stage Company, the Heritage Choral, Interstage Left, and is currently the director and performer for the Oscar Michelle Family Theater Program Company, which I am also involved with. My third guest, is the creator and producer of The Voice. Mr. Gordon Michaels is a graduate from New York City's Music and Arts High School, where he appeared in the original movie, Fame. Since graduation from there, he obtained a BFA in musical theater from the Boston Conservatory of Music. Mr. Michaels is very diverse as he performed in Broadway ballads, jazz standards, blues, R&B oldies, gospel, and guess what? Even country music. He has won many singing competitions throughout New England and New York and has performed with Patti LaBelle, Jennifer Holliday, James Taylor, Arrow Smith, Rod Stewart, Sissy Houston, Keith Lockhart, Natalie Cole, Harlem Gospel Choir, and Tremaine and Edward Hawkins. He is widely known in Boston for creating the House of Blues Gospel Brunch that started in Harvard Square. So please welcome my guests to this afternoon's episode of Going Uptown. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you I'm just so honored to have you guys on here. <laughs> oh, I got to do one thing. I got to clear up one thing. It's the yes, voice. Duh. Yes. Yeah, got to use the word duh. Duh. Uh, for, for legal purposes. Yeah, that's right, because <laughs> the voice is like usually, right. th that's the main one that's and, on the main we're working decision. in our hood, so you know, that's yeah. how we speak, it's the voice. The, the, the voice. voice. The, the voice. voice. The voice. Uh, yeah. Speaking about the voice, how did you come up with that concept? Well, you know, all this reality TV about all these, these um, singing competitions that have come up, and I, I kept saying I, I teach voice mm -hmm. uh, as part of my living, and I get all these clients for a very short time because the voice is coming through somewhere and they want me to either you know, help prep them up or help their song or get their voice in shape so they can go do this 90 second audition. Okay. And so I'm, I'm going through this, I was like, we have more talent in this town than it's ever recognized. That's true. And we have tons of music schools mm -hmm. between Emerson, Boston Conservatory, New England Conservatory, Boston University has an opera department. You know, you have um, oh, Longy School of Music, Berkeley mm -hmm. School of Music, which has merged with Boston Conservatory. So there's so many kids and talented people in this, in this town, and we don't have enough places for them to sing. That's true. So I was like, I started creating 
cabaret dinner shows at this place in Quincy, and it went well. And on my year anniversary, I said, well, it looks like I'm secure here. Maybe I can branch out and start helping people and producing shows for others to get their foot in the door. Okay. So that's how it came to be. And how long have you been doing this competition for? This is it. This is the very first one. Oh, the very first one. Wow. The very wow. first one. And, and speaking about judges, you have Supreme and Sister Monica as a judge, as well as Latoya Robinson, who couldn't be here, a very mm -hmm. good friend of mine still. And how did you guys meet each other and to collaborate? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Monica and I uh, uh, sang together because I produced a show called It Takes Two. Mm -hmm. And it was all duets from every genre. And I had all the singers I wanted, but I didn't have a classical singer. Mm. So I went on a search. I went to all my musical friends. I said, look, I need an opera diva. I need someone who can sing classical music because one of the songs I want to do is Phantom of the Opera. Mm. And I need someone who can hit that high note. Oh, she definitely can. Oh, can <laughs> she hit it? Yes, she can. She can hit it. She can bring it. And I didn't have to give her any direction in performance. Actually, she helped us. Her musicality is off the charts. Oh, yeah, and she and teaches so she, music, too. Yes, I know. She, she told us several <laughs> times we was out of the court. <laughs> so the sister came right, and so, you know, she was such an asset, and, you know, she bent over backwards with whatever she could do to help the production, and we sold out for that show, and it was great. And uh, after that, I was like, when I was thinking about doing this, I was like, I need a judge, and I need a judge whose musicality matches mine, if not better. Mm -hmm. And I'm going through and I'm looking, I'm calling people, I got all directors and everything. I said, wait a minute, let me call Monica. <laughs> I called her up. She said, well, what? Tell, tell me a little bit more about it. Da, da, da. When she said yes, I was the happiest person on the planet. And with Supreme, I, we're on this same website together that I joined by accident. Uh -huh. I, I hit the button to close it and I actually, it, <laughs> it hit me up there to sign up. And I was like, <laughs> so like I was on it like a week. And then they start pairing you with other people who do the same thing that you do okay. to promote and recommend in the neighborhood. And we got paired up instantly. And then somebody in his office said, hey, we'd like to be a part of this. We'd like to help out. Can you give us more information? Mm -hmm. And that's how it came to me. And Latoya came to me because Monica recommended her. Okay. We needed, I had a theater person from the Riverside Theater Works mm -hmm. uh, who was also thinking about directing Dreamgirls in June. And he was looking for females. And I said, well, if you be a judge on my contest, you might find all the people you need to have. Yes. And at the last minute, he had to pull out. And so I was like, Monica, I need another theater person who can direct. And, you know, and she's like, oh, I got just the person for you. <laughs> and she found Latoya. Latoya, wonderful woman, wonderful yeah. woman. Yeah. And Supreme, you've been managing all types of music all in this community. Um, can you tell my audience a little something about yourself? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Supreme Entertainment's been around for a few days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He didn't be an humble person. He didn't be a few days. A few days, right. Um, and uh, we, we, we uh, have uh, sub offices in different um, states and mid region um, and as well as the West. But we don't have any, we didn't have any offices here on the East Coast, which is this region's kind of the toughest region. Mm -hmm. And it's my home region. And so why do you think that this region is the toughest region? There was, there's been a shift somewhere, and I don't know where it happened, but, you know, I, I really uh, divulged that I was going to come back and kind of make that change, make mm -hmm. it back to where it was, at least giving the platforms and opportunities to the independent artists to take the next pl um, stage in, in this new industry. Because it's not the same industry. Everybody's got to understand that the, the industry has evolved mm -hmm. from what it used to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't use wax to press. We don't have to go to a manufacturer and all of this good stuff mm -hmm. no more. It's totally different, and there's other ways of really getting your music out there, being paid for what you do, and um, I kind of mastered that, you know, and now that I'm no longer under Universal's contract, I can freely, free willy <laughs> 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 go ahead and uh, really help a lot of artists. You know, um, Supreme Entertainment has about 75 artists under its roster right now. Mm -hmm. We just recently here in Boston uh, partnered with BMG Records to open up BMG Records to be our, you know, our platform and our portal to get this region open. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that's really going on that, that, that we're trying to make happen. Yeah, you are making it happen because I've been keeping my eye on you, you know, <laughs> even though we don't bump into each other as we right, used to, you know, but right. I keep my eye on you because right. all through social media, that's the thing about technology too. 
but this technology nowadays, like social media and everything over the web, mm. we have more opportunities. Yep, you can and reach just a lot like more. the um, schools that we was talking about earlier, um, you, we have those opportunities to get those people. And not only that, we could get people from our own hood that don't go to these top right. colleges mm -hmm. and stuff and give them a chance. Exactly. Right, exactly. that's the whole key. That's, that's why uh, when my team found um, Mr. Michael's show, they was like, you know, even though it's, you know, we was looking at the controversy of it with the name and so forth. So mm -hmm. And I just explained to him, no, he shifted the name. He should be good, you know. The. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, it's the, not the. That's mm -hmm. right. So it's no conflict. The, the, the spelling, the colors, everything mm -hmm. is different. So he's mm -hmm. kind of cool right there. And it's not like he's trying to make a mint off of it. Right. right. You know, so it's uh, he should be cool right there. And I said, uh, yeah, I'll give him a shot, but just figured it out. I wasn't <laughs> sure. Because, you know, there's a lot <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know what this man is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just throw my name in the hat. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. So yeah. uh, he said he definitely needed a studio. I think that's when we had a conversation because mm -hmm. my people was like, oh, man, he's asking for a studio. And then I guess he won over one of my people because she was just trying to give him so much. I don't know what the conversation this man <laughs> told her. He's a charmer. <laughs> he is. But well, actually, I gave it back. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me so much stuff, I got scared. I was like... What they gonna want after that? Oh, this. You know, yeah. I was like, I might have to sign over a child or something. <laughs> so I said, well, wait a minute. Why don't we just take this? Scale this back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was pleased with that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so yeah, it worked out pretty good, and uh, you know, as I I began to work with Mr. Michaels, even after the first show, I began to see that there's something here, and it's another platform for independent artists. And one of the things when I see that, I try to critique it to the point where it works well, and it can be an ongoing thing. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. So. No, I don't got the problem in offering Mr. Michaels even more stuff as we move along. And Thank it, you. And it <laughs> gives us artists hope, too, you know, yeah. that there's something to aspire in our community. And one of the people that definitely gives people hope is Sister Monica. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. She is one of the best teachers that oh. I ever came across because, you know, like I said, she, she's our director. And, you know, she's a singing teacher, but mm -hmm. she, as well, she's an acting teacher. And mm -hmm. she gives great direction. So I bought some crackers. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and I want her to do this one thing for me while she has these crackers. No, I, I knew I never <laughs> so, Sister Monica, how's your experience been with the voice? It's, it's really been great. And one of the things, and, and Preen sort of um, touched on it, um, as did Gordon, we have so many schools. You can't throw a rock and not hit a college in, you know, the Boston area. Mm -hmm. And... They have some of the greatest music schools in the country, if not in the world. And you have all of this talent in these schools. But outside of those schools, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of raw talent that yes. can be mined, mm -hmm. um, like diamonds in the rough. And you've got people who you know, are working their regular nine to fives wherever they are. Um, but maybe they sang in choir as, you know, as a child, and they grew up singing, and they grew up loving music. And the only outlet they now have maybe is going to karaoke on Wednesday or Thursday night or whatever. And they go in and they kill it, and, but that's it. And a lot, some of these people actually have aspirations beyond that. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, the people in these great colleges, not that we want to exclude them, but they're getting a lot of what these kids don't get, what these young people don't get. And not just young people. Mm -hmm. Some of these people are professionals. They've been singing for a while. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have been singing and for whatever reasons had to pull back, couldn't perform as much anymore. Uh, life changes and you have circumstances you have to deal with and then those circumstances change again and then you have an opportunity to come back and sing. Um, but they may not have had, they may not have the confidence or before they may not have had the, the um, expertise of somebody like Preem, you know, somebody when you were working with, um, somebody that's an A&R, and they can actually sort of move you along and tell you what to do to build your stage presence. Correct. The same thing with Gordon. Mic technique, you know, mm -hmm. things like that that um, don't matter as much in karaoke, but when you want to take it to a next real level. audience, to, to the next level, yeah. exactly. To next le and to a paying audience. To yes. a paying audience, then that can, you know, that really makes a difference. And uh, I like the opportunity to really reach out to those people and to really help those people. And again, nothing against the people who are in you know, these great colleges that we have, but just they're getting so much of what mm -hmm. some of the rest of these very, very talented, if just 
as talented people mm. are not having an opportunity to um, to afford so yeah and some of these people are older mm -hmm. so they might have wanted to pursue music but whatever the situation was they had children you know f family matters mm. and not, they couldn't afford the opportunity to go to college maybe you know their their family nobody went to college and it was their daughters or sons was the first ones to go to college in their family mm -hmm. and in the, in the black community we know what that's about mm -hmm. and so as these I, I was fortunate enough to come to college on scholarship and get a, get a full ride but all these other people can't some of these people are looking for an opportunity to just have someone teach them school them mm -hmm. and now they see a door that's opening yeah. for that and some of them are really eager to learn. Mm -hmm. so to be 47 and just starting out mm -hmm. and having somebody interested in the fact that you can sing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some people who have never taken a voice lesson, just got pushed through because someone in her church said, you really need to do something with your voice. Mm -hmm. Okay. She doesn't know how to read music. She doesn't, she doesn't know what key she sings in and that, but you put her on that stage and she can bring it home. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and those are the people we need to call. And what, what I yes. like about it is the, the voices because um, when I when I came to the New England area, back to the New England area, looking around, I see a lot of hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the R and B singer and the, the opera singers and the, the other singers singers are are hidden under all this eight you know this hip hop and this constant rush to be a hip hop star. Mm -hmm. You know. I like the Gordon's show because I'm I'm intrigued by seeing where the voices are. Yeah. That's what my whole key is. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I need a singer out of this region, so I'm gonna look and look for a voice out of this here, and hopefully I'll find some. Yeah. Okay. And also, um, again, back to <coughs> you know points that have been made, we ha we also have people who have gone to college, mm -hmm. who have studied music in college, but again, for whatever reasons, had to put that on the back burner. Um, and I remember something years ago, um, I was in, in a workshop and somebody asked the question, said, at what point do you stop? What point, at what age do you stop trying? And actually one of the clinicians was walking out of the, out of the room when somebody said that and she stopped, she stopped and she turned and she said, if you can give it up, this is not the for career you. for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. She right. said, you never stop trying. She said, if you can stop trying, then this is not the field for you. You don't have it in your heart. Yeah. So, you know, th the fact that we don't have a cutoff age or that people are thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm 37 or I'm 47, I guess it's just too late. Be surprised the number of careers that have been able to move forward mm -hmm. in, you know, in, in more mature ages. Mm -hmm. So I think I mean, look at all the, the actors and stuff like Danny Glover. He didn't start until he was almost in his 50s. That's mm -hmm. true. You know, mm -hmm. so there's so many people out there that didn't start. The guy who did the television sitcom The Rock, he mm -hmm. started also Charles late Hardy. in his 40s mm -hmm. yeah. after getting out of jail. Mm -hmm. Entertainment has no age. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. So you as, if you're a singer, you just have to, if you're not a solo singer, especially uh, aged people who think they're aged out, if you get into musical theater, there's always a grandmother, there's always a grandfather. <laughs> uh -huh. That's right. you, know, yep. you need these older people. Mm -hmm. Oh, especially in the art theater company. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. we have Minister Toops, yes. mm -hmm. and she is an older lady, mm -hmm. but she has that powerful oh, yeah, voice. Yeah, you, you can't count, out, and, count, count us old people mm -hmm. out. Yeah. We still got a little something. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so my question goes to Gordon. Gordon, um, how did you get your recent p people on the team right now, like the people on a roster right now. Mm -hmm. So did you go out recruiting? Well, I, I, oh, that's a headache. <laughs> so I did a little of everything. First I put it on online. I put it in Craigslist. I put up posters. I sent it out on Facebook. I sent it to all of my singers and told them to send me anybody they know is a singer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I put posters at all the music colleges. But the, putting a post at a music college, people at college put posters on those boards too. Yes. And so if they don't know who you are, your post needs to get something <laughs> put right on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then I went, I started going to karaoke um, jam nights and live music jam sessions. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of raw talent out there, but there's a lot of no talent out there too. <laughs> and you got to sit through a lot of mess mm -hmm. before you find those few needles in that haystack. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, and then I also had it online and people were sending in submissions. So the top 19 that auditioned in the two, two weeks that we had came out of 87 applicants. Mm. I picked the 19. And then from the 19, we're down to 
our top 10 for the semifinals, which you'll see six of them tonight. Okay. So. And while you was having these competitions, was there anything on, like, was it a live stream that people was able to watch? No. Nope. It was just personal. We hadn't gotten there yet. Okay. Because, you know, it started small. There was no budget. There was no money up front. There was nothing back in it but me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not rich. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had, you know, the, the kindness of this guy who uh, runs the tavern in Quincy, mm -hmm. who allowed me, I said, I want to do this. We don't have a place. He goes, we can do it here. Wow. I was like, really? I said, well, it's not going to be a big money maker. He said, it's all right. I'll get the bar. I'll put on a small menu for the food. We worked everything out. It has been growing every week. The first week, it was a downpour rainstorm, and we were sold out. Wow. So, I mean, people are starving for good live entertainment. Mm -hmm. and so, I'm just, we're just trying to give it to them. <laughs> and when these after the performance performs, you gave them the critique. And mm -hmm. Just like, like you would see on The Voice or on American Idol. When they mm -hmm. finish singing, we tell them what we liked. We, and we, you know, we give them their sugar, mm -hmm. and then we give them their salt. Yeah. And we tell them what they need to improve and what they need to work on. And, you know, and believe it or not, they had two songs to sing. So many of them took what we said of our critiques, mm -hmm. went out there during intermission, came back, and it was like I was a whole new singer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Just that quick, they turned it around. And that's... That shows you that some of these people are hungry and they just need direction. Okay. I mean, if you could see a turnaround in 15 minutes, these people, they got the heart and they want it. Mm. Mm. The judging gets tougher as we go along, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm being a nice guy right now. Uh -huh. At least they don't think I'm being nice. <laughs> I'm being a nice guy right now. And then uh -huh. um, as we get into the main competition, they're really going to see the uh, side that, you know, they might not. I'm sending someone home crying. Uh -huh. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, you, well, you know what? You got to nurture Sister Monica here. You yeah, know, she's the nice side. That's the nice side. <laughs> she's not that nice. <laughs> she just puts it in such a technical term they don't uh -huh. understand, yeah. and it sounds pretty. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, we have, you know, you're talking about American Idol. You know, you have those episodes where you have that one person that comes over there that is a total wreck. Mm -hmm. Have you guys experienced that oh, this year? Well, we've had some people that, didn't bring their, their A game, let's say that. Okay. Uh, they have talent, but when they came to, to participate, to audition, they weren't on their A game. Mm -hmm. So I think that if they come back, when we, because our plan is to do another one in September mm -hmm. and jump right on it. Um, and I, after September, I would like to do one for 16 and under, because okay. this one is 16 and above. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do one from the children's side because I contacted the, um, the art school from Boston. What's the name of that school? Boston Arts Academy? Boston Arts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were very, very interested, but almost all the kids that were interested were under 16. Yes. So I would like to get some of these schools involved. I know Newton has a music program and, and Boston and, you know, uh, Framingham and, and get involved with some of these other, other high schools and elementary schools that have this, all these talented kids. Let's start them earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's start getting them into the community theater. Let's get them into places where they can nurture quickly so that they can audition for a Berkeley mm -hmm. or a Boston mm -hmm. Conservatory, have that experience, and maybe they can get a scholarship. And Correct. they have a portfolio. Exactly, yes. they'll have a resume. And, a resume. Yeah. and if somebody wanted to get in contact with you to be a part of the next, uh, the one in September, how would they be able to get in touch uh, with you? Just gordonmichaels.com to email me or devoice.live. Okay, and we have something up coming up real soon. I believe it's Wednesday, the semifinals. Is it Wednesday? Monday. Monday. This Monday, Monday coming up. Yes. Mm -hmm. The semifinals. Can you Top please 10. talk about that a little bit? Ooh, so this is <laughs> this is going to be challenging. Uh -huh. So we have three weeks of semifinals, and the three weeks of semifinals lead to the finals. So every week we eliminate two mm. until we get down to four. Mm -hmm. Each week, not only are we eliminating two and then the rest move on, each week the genre changes for music. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we are really putting these singers through the test. Mm -hmm. Because if we're going to find an artist, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm thinking of Supreme. Supreme is looking for artists. You don't want someone who only sings in one box. Mm -hmm. Correct. You want to be able to do it all. Right now, as he said, it's very hip-hop heavy. I want to know that you can do Broadway. You can sing jazz. You can sing blues, R&B, right. contemporary. I would have put a classical category in there, but I thought that would be too much. That would be just evil. <laughs> so, but, but we have this, this coming week, the very first semifinals is contemporary music from the 1990s to 2010. So they got 30 years 
to pick music from. Mm. Next week, we, we move to Broadway, and they have to give us a, contempor uh, a Broadway song that's up-tempo and a ballad. Mm -hmm. This week, we only do one song. Next week, we do two songs. Then the third week, we move to jazz, mm -hmm. and then they have to do one song that they want to do and one song that the judges pick for them to do mm. that we can hear them singing. Mm -hmm. And then the last week, they get to pick two, and then we're doing a, a celebration for the Motown 60 year, so it's going to be all Motown music. Mm -hmm. And not only just Motown that everyone thinks of, Motown had several subsidiaries that fell under Motown. Mm -hmm. They had a gospel label, they had a rock label, they had a sure. blues label. They could pick from anything from Motown wow. to do. And then we also give them one song from any genre that we think we would like to hear them sing. And each of these different um, like sections, they're gonna be in the same location? Or? They're all gonna be in the same location except for the finals. Final the finals okay. will be on a Tuesday because that, that Monday falls on uh, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And so if we outgrow, we, our space is only 55 seats. Mm. So if we outgrow that with the ticket sales for the finals, we'll be moving to the Quincy Yacht Club. Okay. And that seat's 150. And if people want to get tickets, how can they get tickets? The Voice dot Live. The Voice dot Live. D A V. The oh, Voice. Yeah. The Voice. <laughs> the Voice. The Voice. <laughs> voice dot Live. Yeah. Yes. And our prizes are great. Uh, of course, first prize package came from. Uh, Supreme Entertainment. It's a four-hour recording session with the, with the uh, opportunity to produce a uh, demo single. Mm -hmm. They get two radio spots and a television spot. Mm -hmm. They okay. also get three months of um, Manager. artist management. Manager for consulting. Mm -hmm. Yes, consulting. So he's going to tell them all about the business, yeah. the legalese about it, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second place is they get two voice lessons with myself or Monica. I produce them a show of their own to be done at, at the Fox and Hound Tavern. I will work with them, pick a show that they can have their own, have their friends and family come to. Mm -hmm. And the, the, third, the third prize winner gets to sing on the second prize winner's thing. They get to open their first and second act. They also get two voice lessons with us. And all four of the remaining finalists this year um, get to sing on Quincy Pride for their parade. Wow. So, uh, and I'm Absolutely. producing the hour show. Each artist will have 15 minutes mm -hmm. to, to sing, in, and the genre will be disco. I think okay. also disco and, and the rock band. And right. Um, we, yeah. That's the other thing. Uh, the oh, the, the Roxbury first, Parade. Yeah, the, the Roxbury Parade is being off thrown in there as well. So yeah. they'll be they'll performing at the yeah. Roxbury Parade. Well, oh, that's great stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Monday, we'll, they will have the semifinals for 10 of the artists. but. Coming up next, we are going to see seven of these artists on Going Uptown. And this is Uptown Brown, and join with the judges from The Voice. Our first performer performs in the greater Boston area. He mostly, most recently sang and acted at True Repertory Theater in Kingston, Mass. He has made a, a wide vocal, or he has a wide vocal range and enjoys performing genres from R&B and jazz to pop and rock. Here is Michael Angelo Barone singing Some, Something Got a Hold On Me. Oh, sometimes I get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before, no, no. And I just gotta tell you right now that I, mm, I believe, I really do believe. Something's got a hold on me, yeah. Oh, it must be love. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Something's got a hold on me right now, child. Oh, it must be love. Let me tell you now, now I got a feeling 
I feel so strange. Everything about me seems to have changed. Step by step, I got a brand new walk. I even sound sweeter when I talk. I said, oh, oh, whoa. Hold on me, yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Something's got a hold on me right now, child. Let me tell you now, now I never felt like this before. Something's got a hold on me and I don't let it go. I believe I'll die if I only could. Sure feels strange, but it sure feels good. I say, yo, oh, oh, oh. whoa. You're gonna put a hurting on me. I said, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Give it up for Michael Angelo Barone. And good luck on Tuesday. I mean Monday. You gonna I think you're gonna do good. I, I was really entertained by this. Our next performer, Mr. Jesse Stone, has been performing since he was a knee high to a grasshopper. He be, be, began performing for others at the age of eleven as the title role in Oliver. That is a good production, by the way. <laughs> and has thereafter required a hook cane to be pried off of stage. Jesse's performance repertoire has varied over the years as he played the lead male role in such musicals as Hello, Dolly, Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, Anything's Goes, and 42nd Street. Jesse was a member of the Children's Choir in the national tour of Joseph and Amazing Technicolor Demo Dreamcoat, starring Donnie Osmond. Wow. He has performed with the San Diego Gay Men's Chorus as a solo artist in Boston-based venues and was featured in a series of regional W.B. Mason's commercials. Who but W.B. Mason? Here is Mr. Jesse so Stone singing Being Alive. Someone to hold you too close Someone to hurt you too deep Someone to sit in your chair And ruin your sleep And make you aware of being alive Someone to need you too much Someone to know you too well Someone to pull you up short And put you through hell And give you support For being alive Make me alive Make me alive, make me confused, mock me with praise. Let
let me be used Vary my days But alone Is alone Not alive Somebody pulled me too close Somebody forced me to care Somebody make me come through I'll always be there As frightened as you Of being alive Being alive Being alive Someone you have to let in Someone whose feelings you spare Someone who, like it or not, is willing to share a little, a lot of being alive. Make me alive. Make me confused. Mock me with praise. Let me be used. Vary my days. But alone is alone, not alive. Somebody hold me too close. Somebody force me to care. Somebody make me come through. I'll always be there, as frightened as you of being alive. Being alive. Being alive. Being alive. Being alive. I'm being Wow. Good to see him singing a song on West Side Story. Well, give it up for Jesse Stone. That was a beautiful song. Like I got was just saying, I could see him singing a song from West Side Story. Oh, my goodness. Our next performer, Miss Phyllis Fallon, musical inspiration comes from divas like Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn. Carmen McRae and Billie Holiday. Several nights a week, she channels her musical idols while singing with local big bands and jazz trios. Here is Miss Phyllis Fallon singing Cheek to Cheek. <laughs> Heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak, and I seem to find the happiness I see. When we're out together, dancing cheek to cheek, heaven, I'm in heaven, and the cares that hung around me through the week seem to vanish like a gambler's lucky streak. When we're out together, dancing cheek to cheek, oh, I'd love to climb a mountain and reach the highest peak but it doesn't thrill me half as much as dancing cheek to cheek oh i'd love to go out fishing in a river or a creek but i won't enjoy it half as much as dancing cheek to cheek dance with me I want my arm about you, the charm about you will carry me through to heaven. I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak, and I seem to find 
the happiness I see. And when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek. Joining me on muted trumpet is Mr. Miles Davis. By the way, I'm the champion seat dancer in Boston. Come on and dance with me. I want my arm about you. The charm about you will carry me through to who? Heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak, and I seem to find the happiness I see. And when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek, out together, dancing cheek to cheek. Out together, dancing cheek to cheek. Oh, yeah. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm in heaven. Oh, in heaven. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful song. Thank you very much. Our next performer is a Southern Georgia girl from Augusta, Georgia, who came to Boston for a better look on life. She started to sing at Rogers Tabernacle Church of God in Christ in Brea Creek, Georgia, and from then on, she just always sung in the church. And now she is singing for The Voice. Here is Unique Williams singing Ready for Love. quickly give my freedom to be held in your captivity I am ready for love all of the joy and the pain all the time that it takes just to stay in your good grace lately I've been thinking maybe you're not ready for me maybe you think I need to learn maturity they said watch what you ask for cause you might receive and if you ask me tomorrow I'll say the same thing I am ready for love Would I won't complain I just need you to acknowledge that I am here if you give me half a chance I'll prove this to you I will be patient kind faithful and true Respects the spirit world and think with his heart. Oh, 
Wow. Wow. Ready for, for Love by Miss Unique Williams. And that was so powerful, makes me ready for some love. Mm -hmm. Our right. former was born and raised in Boston, Mass. He has been singing since he was four years old. Um, his Lucy Vandro, Sam Cooke, and Donnie Hathaway are his music inspirations. You can find him singing at the Cantab Lounge, probably with Melvin, huh, in Cambridge, in Slade's Bar and Grill in Roxbury. Here is Joseph Royal singing Twisting the Night Away. He must know Melvin. <laughs> Let me tell you about a place somewhere up the New York way where the people are so gay, twisting the night away. Here to have a lot of fun, putting trouble on the run. All men you find them old and young, twisting the night away. They're twisting, all twisting. Everybody's feeling great. They're twisting. Twisting, they're twisting the night away. Here's a man in evening clothes. How we got here, I don't know. But all oh man, you ought to see him go. Twisting the night away. All oh, dancing with the chicken slacks. Oh, she's moving up his back. Oh man, there ain't nothing like twisting the night away. They're twisting, all twisting. Everybody's feeling great. They're twisting, twisting, yeah, twisting the night. Let's twist a while. Twisting the night away. I was over here twisting. Um, our next and last performer is an award-winning American singer, songwriter, and actor. Mr. Aaron Stone's diverse vocal style ranges from Broadway, gospel, and soul to classical, soul, and pop. He has been, feature, uh, he's, has been a featured soloist with the Boston Pops Gospel Night at the Pops at Boston Symphony Hall and the Voices of Liberty at Walt Disney World Epcot. His portrayal of No More in the Knoxville Museum of Arts production of Five Guys Named Mo, Mo garnered a Best Actor in a Musical Award from the Knoxville Area Theater Coalition. He holds a Master of Music in Musical Theater from the Boston Conservatory, where he worked with Fran Connors. And here's Aaron Stone singing The Last Time. The first time I fell in love was long ago. I didn't know how to give my love at all the next time i settled for what felt so close but without a romance you're never gonna fall after every 
everything I've learned Now it's finally my turn This is the last time I'll fall in love First time we walked under that starry sky, there was a moment when everything was clear, and I didn't need to ask or even wonder why, cause each question is answered when you're near. And I'm wise enough to know when a miracle unfolds, this is the last time I'll fall in love. Now, don't hold back, just let me know. 